If YouTube playlists are not your thing, you can find this course and more at poll.unfgames.com. It's easier to follow along and know where you left off. Now, let's start the video. Let's talk about the construction script. Here, let me put the example of we had the pickups. This one gave me one coin, this one five, and this one ten. And I wanted to represent it visually, right? So let's open the blueprint. We can right click and edit it. And we can modify it. We could create multiple bl blueprints that can change the scale or because there are blueprints and instances, I could also go here, click on the component and change the scale also. And let me put this lock and then change the scale. I could do this, but I want it to be this scale to be driven by, and let's click on my BP coin itself, by the number of coins. So whenever this number of coins, maybe now is one, if it's five, it should be bigger uh, and, and maybe it should be a little smaller. Let me press play and yeah, maybe it should be, yeah, let's leave it like that. So how could we do that? Well, let's open it. I just used control E and here in the construction script, what will happen is that this script will be run before the game begins. And also it will be run every time a property changes if I'm using it in the editor. What this means is let's add our a node that just prints a value. Print. And it can say hello. I, I'm going to make it say the number of coins that we have in this case. This is our variable for the number of coins that it will give. So I can drag it and drop it to my construction script graph and get that number. Going to connect it. And we find this conversion node and it's because this node receives a string, a string of characters. So we can type it on the, on the screen, but this variable is a number, an integer. So this does the conversion between the number and the text. Now let's compile it. And you see that it ran one time because it was the first time that this new logic has been added. So here I can press play and you probably won't see anything because the construction script has already run. But if I change any property on any of these blueprints, the value will run again. Well, the script will, will run again. So I can change the, the location. And I'm not seeing the, the script. It is running coins, it's printing to screen. Well, let's check the log. To open the log, let me pull windows and output log. And we have it here. Let's clear the log. If we change a value, then it give me the, the action of printing a string that it has the number of coins to give. If I change any value here, then it should be say five and this should be, should be 10. This also means that if I change the number of coins here, it will reflect that change. So that's how the construction script runs. In our game, the construction script will run before the game executes. And in that case, we would see the, these debugs. Every time we press play, uh, we, we would see them here. In our case, in the editor, the, the logic has already run. So it doesn't need to worry about it again. So let's 
go back to our blueprint coin and you can call this screen by using control and then shift and here uh, we don't want to print to the lock again we want to change the scale of this component so that component is called static mesh coin i'm gonna drag and drop it here and i need to change the the scale value so here scale well it's called scale so let's change the scale i can type scale and whenever we are doing this action of dragging from a pin it's good to know that this checkbox is active because this means that it's content sensitive and if it's context sensitive all the actions that i can do here will be valid if it wasn't then there are a lot of stuff for example ar alignment may maybe it it hasn't do hasn't anything to do with my static mesh coin so you can deactivate it for more advanced stuff if you already know what you want but i usually have it checked because it helps filter a lot of the stuff inside the engine so here let's search scale set mass scale that, that sound that doesn't sound like it let's go a little bit further here we have get world scale set relative scale or set world scale in our case we're gonna work with relative uh, scale because that way for example if we set the scale here it says for the coin and let me delete delete that if we put it like 0 0.5 what this will mean is well now i have connected this relative scale let's compile and now it has changed the scale but in our map if I scale this blueprint from the from the origin well from the root parent root component then because we are using relative scale it's also scaling with this static mesh if we were to use world coordinates here and let's do it again but instead of set relative scale set world scale and i'm gonna feed it the same values now if i compile my blueprint will stay the same but in my map even though i have scaled this blueprint it stays the same scale because we're using the world scale and not the relative scale this is just a thing to take in consideration i just need the the relative scale and it will depend on the number of coins i can i can uh, give right so maybe my maximum value would be 10 so i can here in my detail panel i can set a slider range and a value range so it can be validated i could put 10 here and 1 so whenever i try to put i don't know 30 it it gets validated 0 it goes to 1 and on a slider range i can also do the same stuff so 1 and 10 and now i can slide it from the minimum value uh, to the maximum value so it's I need stuff to have perfect the default value should be one though let's compile again save and now we have in in our example three sizes right one is and uh, let me return this to to the normal scale we have a coin that can give us one one that can give us five and one that can give us ten and let's say there, there won't be any 
any coin that can give us any other number. So what we could do is here drag and drop from the new scale and select and use the node called select. That's that's it. And we can do it like this. We have an index, we have different options. And if it's one, well, if it's zero, let, let's put it one. Let's call this a default value. If it's one, it will use this value. And the thing about doing it like this, uh, we can add options at pin. Is that it's gonna be like really uh, gross because for example, option five, that's five coins, right? Let's put it like 1.25 and let's copy and paste that value. And for option 10, let's do it like 1.5. And let's copy and paste the value. So now let's compile it. Let's go to the viewport. One gives me a value of one. Oh, and this is being changed, I, I believe. Yeah, it should always stay at 0 0.25. So even though we, we could change the value here, you will know that uh, our viewport is not updating because the construction script is running and it's always setting it to one. So this should be like this. Construction script is always running because I changed something here. So the C value should be, yes, the C value, yeah. The C value should be 0 0.25 and the same for the other ones and the same for this one. So now, Oh, let's let's compile. And I I said the the option zero, but not the option one because remember this is one. If this would be two, it would be zero. So let's let's check it out. Number of coins to give one, two is zero, three is zero, five, it gets bigger, and then it gets a little bit bigger. We can compile, save it, and then here we will be able to, to see the values, for example here 5, and for example here 10 again. It changed because I went to the, I, I set the default number of coins, like I, I changed it too much, so it affected everything. So now we have this behavior. Now, I could go to the next step that we're, we're gonna see the event graph, but I want to get a cleaner implementation here. So a cleaner way to do this, and this is a good place to talk about. Oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's leave it for, for later. Let's leave it for later. We, it, this is a quick start, so let's not worry too much about it. We'll clean this up, don't worry.